Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. You know, we have a good God. A God who loves us and cares for us. He knows our every need and He meets us at the place of our need. I think it's wonderful to think that He just didn't come to this earth to be with us. But He made a way that we come be with Him. Praise the Lord. I know there's a lot of heartache. Matthew, his family suffered another loss. Brother Ryan passed away today. And uh, I'm sure the family is going through quite a bit. But he left the house of God this morning, my understanding. He went home and went to be in the house of God. Praise the Lord. I remember years ago hearing of a man that, and I, I think I mentioned a little bit ago, you all may have heard me, I've got a big mouth. That finished up a, one of the most fiery sermons he'd ever preached and stepped down out of the pulpit and fell on the floor and was gone. And I can't think of a better way to go, to be honest with you. We need to get our eyes off of this world because we all have an appointed time. I know that's not easy to say, and, and people get upset with you for, for saying these things sometimes, but we all have an appointed time. Yes. Saved or unsaved, we all have an appointed time. The day is coming that I won't be here. But to be absent in the body, the Apostle Paul said, is to be present with the Lord. I believe Brother Ryan is present with yes. the Lord. We need to pray for his family tonight. I think you all knew Brother Ryan. I'm sure you've all met him. Good man. Good man. He was just here yesterday for a minister's breakfast and we had a good time with him. And like I said a little bit ago, he found out, well, he, he was witnessing that I think it was last week his son came to the altar and was saved. Now, if that doesn't incite a father, yes. I don't know what else can to see your child come to, come to God. And I'm thankful that he was here long enough to see that because that's a yes. blessing. That is a blessing. But as we open this service tonight, let's, let's pray for the family. He was part of a special family. I don't know how many of you know uh, Kyle and Ruth and Christina that comes, you know. Mm -hmm. Jess, they were, they're all special people in my heart and I know in God's heart. I don't think my son could have married into a finer family. Good people. Good people. And I, I believe that we need to pray for the family because they're going to feel a loss. They're going to feel a loss. Even though it's heaven's gain, it's our loss. And I remember years ago when my father died, I spoke at his funeral. People said, how can you do that? Because I believe what I said I believe. I believe tonight that Ryan is in the presence of God. I believe that with the whole heart. Sincerely believe that. But that doesn't stop the pain of a family that's missing a father, that's missing a husband, missing a son-in-law, missing a brother-in-law. It doesn't stop the pain of a church that lost its pastor. We need to pray for that church. God, raise them up somebody. Praise God. Let's start out with praying, praying for them, and then we'll open the service up. And I don't know that there's anything more important right now than God bring these people peace. God, please bring these people. Now, if you want to come to the altar, you're welcome to. If you want to pray from your seats, you're, that's fine. But I do want to pray for this family first and foremost tonight. That God will move for this family. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your love, and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of having known Ryan, Lord God, and his family. Now, Father, we know, Lord, that he is with you tonight, Lord God, and he's in your presence rejoicing and praising you. But tonight, Lord, his family, Lord, is missing him. There is a church, Lord God, that the, 
the shepherd is, is no more. But God, you're able to supply the needs of these, this family. You're able to supply the needs of this church, Lord God. And tonight we rebuke the power of the enemy in Jesus' name that would bring grief and pain. And Lord, just help them to realize, Lord, <laughs> that they'll see him again. If they hold on to the, till the end, they will see him again. They will be in his presence again. And Father, we just want to glorify you tonight for your presence here tonight. And Lord, we just ask that your will and purpose be fulfilled in this service tonight, Lord God. That whatsoever you would have done would be done. Whatsoever you would have said would be said. Lord, that we would glorify your name and not our own. Father, be praised tonight if you lift up and give the glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
the time that I will look him in the eyes. Praise God. I know you've heard me say this before, but it just stirs my heart yes. to know. Praise God. I know my Redeemer lived. Praise God. I know that one day I'm going to stand in His presence. I know that. I don't doubt that one bit. Not one bit do I doubt that. Tonight we need to really turn our hearts over to Him and allow Him yes. to have His way in our lives. Yes. It's such a short time that we're here. But praise God we'll be with Him for eternity. Does anybody have a testimony tonight? God been good to anybody? like a big enough word because there are no words that can there's no words that can describe it Grace of Right now, my heart is broken for the family. 
Jesus said himself that it was expedient that he go away so the comforter could come. And thank God we have a comforter in this life. Yes. You know, people say, well, the life of the Christian is harder than that. No, it's not. We go through the same things. It says that the very same trials are accomplished in our brothers that are in the world. The difference is we have a comforter, they don't. Yeah. We have a God standing with us, and we have a hope that after we go through this life, Scripture says that I reckon that the trials of this present time, to paraphrase, are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. It's not worthy to be compared. This is a small thing that we're going through. It seems big so many times, but it's small that we're going through. God's going to bring us through it all. Anybody else with testimony?
guy with a special song.
Well, we want to find those for many years. I have a saying at the wall, so we'll see how they do. Oh 
I'm so thankful to know Jesus today. Yes. Nothing better. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus Christ. There's been things in my life that brought me blessings. But nothing compares to knowing Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter tonight. If the Holy Spirit started giving this to me earlier today. And like I said, a lot of times I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm sure He knows what He's doing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Many of you recognize Ephesians 6 and 10 talking about the armor of God. Today, more than any day, we need to be prepared for the battle. We need to be ready for the battle. Every day when we get up, we don't know what is going to transpire in that day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, we read that verse and we just say, well, okay, be strong in the Lord. But no, don't be strong in your own power. Don't be strong in your own might. Don't be strong in your own thoughts. Be strong in the Lord. Yes. And in the power of his might. Brother Ronnie said something about last week about in my weakness, he is made strong. Yes. He's not strong in me because I'm strong. He's strong in me because I'm weak. Praise the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not yours. Too many times today we go out in our, under our own power, and I used to be bad about that. I've seen people say, well, I'm going to show these people this, and I'm going to... No. Let God show the people. If God's got a word to speak through you, then speak it. Many times the words that we want to say, we probably shouldn't. <laughs> I've learned that the hard way. Put on the whole armor of God. Now you notice there, put on the whole armor. Now I've had people say, well, I can tell God was putting my armor on. That's not what the scripture says. We have to put on the armor of God. It's not something that God just does for us. He provides the armor. But we've got to put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now we know that the enemy is going to work to steal, kill, and destroy. That's all he wants to do. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy your witness. But if we put on the whole armor, he can't reach us. He can't touch us. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I wish everyone would hear that tonight. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I remember years ago, I was pastoring a small church, and somebody came up and started telling me, you know what so-and-so, this and that, and the other thing, and they said this and that, and they and, and think that they were talking about me. Do you want to know who said that? You know who said that? I said, I know exactly where that came from. Came straight from the pits of hell on Toronto, I don't understand. God help us, we need to stop listening to what people are saying. I don't care what people say about me. Praise the Lord. As long as I'm living right before God, I don't care what the world thinks about me. Praise God. I have one master. The Apostle Paul said he was a bond servant. And a bond servant meant that you belong to one person. And I believe tonight that I am a bond servant. I belong to one person. I love and care for others. But there's only one that is in charge. There's only one that is in charge. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and, and God help us, we try too many times 
to fight against flesh and blood. We worry about things in this world that we just... One thing we need to realize in the first place, let me say this, every problem we have is rooted in a spiritual problem. It's not rooted in a physical problem. It's rooted in a spiritual problem. You can overcome the physical with the spiritual. You understand what I'm saying? If your spirit's right, your body's going to go along with it. But if your spirit's weak and beggarly, and you're giving up in the spirit, you need to build up that spirit. Not build up the flesh, not make the flesh strong, but make the spirit of God stronger in your life. Walk closer to Him. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And people say, well, we try to make that about our leaders. But if your leaders are wicked, it's because they're being controlled by evil spirits. God help me. I, I have to say about evil spirits. I don't like talking about evil spirits. I really don't. But if we don't follow close to Jesus, we will be controlled by them. You're going to have a master. People say in this world, well, I, I want to do what I want to do, so I don't want to serve Jesus. You're not doing what you want to do anyway because the evil in this world is leading you down a path that you really don't want to go down when you think about it. Praise the Lord. Spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness in the high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Praise God. So that you'll be able to stand in the evil day, not moving. Immovable. I'm standing right here. This is where God told me to stand and I'll stand here. And all the devils in hell cannot move me. We go around, especially this time of year, everybody talking about demons and witches and this and that and the other thing. And praise God, it bothers me that we do that we get all mixed up with this stuff. But they have no power over me as long as I have my armor on. As long as I'm not being drugged into a fight hand to hand, flesh to flesh, because my flesh is not strong. But the Spirit of God dwelling in me is strong. Yes. The armor that God has given me is strong and able to make me to stand. I can't stand on my own power. I can't do it on my own. But with Christ in me, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Everything that God has planned for my life will come to pass as long as I stand in His presence and say, God, trusting you. I'm just trusting you. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Oh, there's a word people don't like today. How many times do people say, well, you've got your truth and I've got my truth and everybody's got their own truth. I'm going to say it again. You've heard me say this before. When you say that we each have our own truth, what you're saying is we each have our own opinion. And I don't know about you, but my opinion has been wrong before. Anybody else been through that? My opinion has been wrong. But the truth doesn't change. The truth is still the truth. Praise God. The truth is still the truth. Being girt about the truth. The, I, one of the things that you need to be strong in this day is truth. Yes. You girt your loins with truth. Without the truth, we can't stand. Well, God help me. You say, well, I don't know why I believe that. Yes, that's, that's absolutely true. And where do you get the truth? Thy word is truth, is what the scripture says. I believe the word of God. His word is truth. So many people are going aside to different books, to different teachers that are teaching them things that are not in the word of God. They're not in the scriptures. They're going to so many different things. And if we're not burdened with truth, we'll fail. 
Our armor will fail if we try to gird ourselves with something besides truth. We need the truth in our lives. Everybody said, oh no, you just need to love everybody. You don't need to worry about the truth. But it's, it's, the scripture says, speaking the, what? The truth in love. You speak the truth in love. People today think that if you speak a word that they don't agree with, you don't love them. Praise God. That's foolishness. Just because somebody doesn't, doesn't agree with me when I speak doesn't mean I don't love them. Many times when we're told something, it's because someone loves you that they tell you the things that you need to know. If you go from this place without hearing the word that God told me to give you, if I don't speak that word, then your blood is on my hands. Praise God. Your blood is on my hands. I'm responsible to deliver the truth. Let's read this again. 14th verse. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Protect your heart from being righteous. Where do we get this righteousness from? The only thing that righteousness is like holiness. God's going to mark it on both of them. We cannot be righteous in ourselves. That type of breastplate would fail us. Our own self-righteousness, it fails. The enemy would go right through it. Matter of fact, he'd use it against us. Self-righteousness is one of the things that destroys Christians more than anything. Thinking they're right in their own eyes. We need to be righteous before God, and that's the breastplate for our heart, keeping our heart. And that righteousness we can only receive from Him. <clears throat> Even as the truth, we receive the armor from God, but we put it on. God does not make us put it on. We put on the armor. Having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Praise God. You move about being shocked with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace on your heart. Everywhere, peace in your feet. Everywhere that you step, you bring peace. I remember coming into a room a certain evangelist years ago, and I won't even talk about his name or anything because I don't want to glorify him. But when I walked in the room, I could feel the Holy Spirit in such a way. It touched my heart. I walked into the room and I didn't even see him, didn't know who, where it was, but when he came out, I knew that he spent time with God. Not that he was great, but his God was great and he was bringing it with him. That's what they said about the disciples. When they spoke with them, they didn't speak about how much knowledge and understanding they had. They recognized that they'd been with Jesus. That's what they recognized. But that breastplate of righteousness and having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, now this is the top of the list, taking the shield of faith. Now where do we get faith from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We're protected by the faith it comes from the Word of God. God said it, and it's true, so it protects you. It all goes back to truth. Everything about Him is true. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, protecting your mind and your thoughts. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Ready to go to battle, being a soldier, ready to go to battle. We need to be ready today more than we ever have in our entire lives. I don't know about the rest of you, but it looks to me like the world is getting darker by the minute. Yes. It's getting darker by the minute. I thank God that His Word, according to Scripture, is a light into my path. Praise God, He's lighting my way. In this dark world, we need more light. How do we get more light? Jesus said that we were the light of the world. I'll tell you something.
something about light. When it's extremely dark, light is noticed. You understand what I'm saying? You shut all the lights out of this place and somebody lights a match and it looks bright. They light a match and in, in the brightness, you can't tell. But we need to be the light of this world. We need to be prepared. We need to be prepared to go to battle. As I began reading this, I started thinking about David. Now, I don't know if you remember the story of David, but there was a... Let's just jump back here real quick. We, we, we've got a little bit of time. Uh, 1 Samuel. I believe it's the 17th chapter. Yeah, 17th chapter. And let's start about 34 verse. I don't want to read the whole story. You've heard the story many times, I'm sure. But I want to point something out here. And David said to Saul, 34th chapter, 17th, uh, yeah, 34th chapter. 17th chapter, 34th verse. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. I want you to notice the difference in the way David speaks here. How many times have we said, God, I've already been through this and this and this and this and now I have to face this? David said, I've already slew a lion. I've already slew a bear. Send me out against this giant. He's just, he's just another one on the list. He's another one on the list. We as children of God should trust God enough to say, God, you've already delivered me out of this. Instead of whining about what we've been through, God, you, you showed me that I could go through this. God, you showed me that I could whoop the lion. You showed me I could whoop the bear. Praise God. And now here comes this job. 37th verse said, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the fall of the lion, and out of the bear, the fall of the bear, would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Because Saul was afraid of the giant. Everybody else was afraid of the giant. Now, Saul was way up here. Above, he was head and shoulders above everybody in the, in the field. It said he was a big man, a man of war from his youth. And he's got this little skinny kid that comes up. And I think Saul was probably thinking, well, what do we got to lose? Nobody else wants to fight this man. Let this, let this kid go out there and let's see what happens. And I hope the Lord delivers you. Because by David being delivered, all Israel was delivered. Now listen to this. And Saul armed David with his armor and put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor and essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these. It's the wrong armor. This is not the armor God gave me. This is the wrong armor. I can't go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand. <laughs> Didn't want the sword, let me take my staff. He took his staff in his hand. He knew God had already delivered him with just the staff and with the sling. And he chose him five smooth stones out of the road. To put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a strip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew nigh to the Philistine. And the Philistine, now I want you to listen to the words of the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near, 
here to David and the man that buried Sheol went before him. And can you see this? It's like a whole army of people coming. You got one guy just carrying the giant shield. And the giant coming up behind him. And David standing there. David standing there. Having done all the stand, David standing. He's standing there. And the Philistines looked about and saw David and was disdained and disdained him for his buddy youth and a ruddy cock, ruddy, ruddy and a fair countenance. And the Philistines said unto him, David, unto David, am I a dog that thou come up to meet with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the fields. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. Praise God. The God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. You might be big. You might have a big sword. You might have a big shield. You might even have somebody carrying your shield for you. Praise God. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. He had the proper armor on. He was standing. He done all he could do to stand, he was standing. We need to prove out our armor that God has given us. So we need to make sure that we have put, put on the proper armor that God has given us. For David, that day his armor was his shepherd gear. That was good enough. It was good enough. But David was not standing against the giant with the sling. He was standing against the giant with what? The Word of God. Hallelujah. 46 verse. Read a couple more. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. And I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the, the carcasses of the host of Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. That the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. David wasn't speaking like, oh, I, I'm tough and I'm going to whoop you. No, I, no, you, you defied the God of Israel. You came against my God. You see, we need to stop trying to fight our battles on our own. The battle isn't ours, it belongs to God. That's what David realized that day. This was God's battle. This was God's battle. We are God's people. When the enemy comes against us, we need to stand. We don't have to do anything special because we should already have an armor on. We just need to trust God. Tonight we need to begin to gather our armor together. More and more faith. We need more faith than ever before. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. You think about Gideon and Gideon's army. Think about Joshua walking around Jericho. Can you imagine how foolish they felt? What are we doing just walking? This is the third day in a row we're walking around this city. And what in the world? It was the word of God that brought the walls down. People say, well, it was because they did this. Because No, it was because they were obedient to what God had told them to do. They didn't have to charge the walls. They didn't have to get big sticks and beat on the walls. They didn't have to, God give us a pen, which were were name back then. They just trusted God and did what God said to them. Children of God, we need to learn to listen to what God is speaking. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We need faith. And we need to be able to stand and declare what God is saying today. I've heard so many, and I, I, I know I get people mad at me, but that's okay. That's okay. I've heard so many that, that seem to think that God stopped speaking. Don't 
From the time he first began to create, he has not stopped speaking to his children. It's not that he's not speaking or not listening. And I'm not saying that he's going to chatter with you every day, but when you call on him, he can speak to you. The problem is we generally don't give him enough time because our prayer life is God give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Amen. Sometimes we need to be quiet and listen. And sometimes we need to pray, God, show me what you need for me to do. Show me what is my portion of this battle. Show me what you would have me to do to see one saved. If you live your whole life and you witness to one person, they get saved. Your whole life is full. But praise God, we need to stand on the promises that God has given us. We need to stand on the Word and know that we cannot be defeated if we're in our armor, if we're where we belong, if our faith is strong and we raise our shield and we raise our sword. Praise God, the sword is the Word of God. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, it says. Praise God. We need to trust Him tonight. We need to stand in. Praise the Lord. Does anyone need prayer tonight?